Welcome to the Functional Medicine Radio Show with your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, known internationally as the Functional Medicine Doc. Dr. Carrie is committed to helping patients find the root cause of their health problems and fixing the cause with natural treatments so they can feel normal again. Dr. Carrie is the founder of Functional Medicine Ontario and is the author of the hit book, Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again. Please welcome your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Functional Medicine Radio Show, the only internet radio show dedicated to giving you real solutions to improve your health. Not only are they real solutions, but they're natural solutions as well. Because as you know, the one and only true wealth you have is your health. I'm your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, the Functional Medicine Doc, and I'm committed to helping you find the root cause of your health problem, fix the cause with natural treatments, so you can feel normal again and live your life to the fullest. Just a quick bit of housekeeping before I introduce today's special guest. I'm happy to announce that I'm now working on my next book. The title is Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again for Men. I've discovered 14 root causes of fatigue. I like to call them the fatigue factors. And in this book, I'll explain eight of the 14 and how they specifically relate to men. And of course, I'll include my own personal fatigue story, along with four or five other stories from real fatigue cases from my private practice. This book should be ready later this year, so keep an eye out for it. That's it for our housekeeping, so let's get started. I'm so very excited about this week's show because my special guest is Tosca Reno. Let me tell you a little bit about her. She is on a mission to inspire people to transform their lives and to commit to changing for life. Tosca Reno has started what she calls an Eat Clean Revolution, and she wants you to join her. She's the author of the books, Your Best Body Now, and the Eat Clean Diet series, and the Start Here Diet. Tosca is one of North America's most renowned health and wellness experts leading the pack in the battle against obesity. Tosca, thank you so much for being my special guest today on this episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show. Fabulous to be here with you, Dr. Carey, and with the rest of your listeners. Thank you. So week in and week out, I have patients coming to see me in my private practice at Functional Medicine Ontario, and very often one of their challenges is with weight loss. And you and I know, we both know, and most of our listeners know that many people feel they can change their physical appearance through exercise alone, but we know that that's not the one and only factor, that nutrition is a critical aspect of the effort and specifically sugar. So that's what I want to talk to you about today is sugar. Sugar is a big one. And <laughs> it's very true, uh, Dr. Carey, that uh, nutrition is a, is a component that is often overlooked when people want to begin their um, physique transformations, they, they think, okay, well, let me just exercise. And, and I was one of those people. I used to weigh 204 pounds 15 years ago. And I thought, oh, I'll just jump on the treadmill and I'll run away all my pounds. But it doesn't work like that. And in truth, to undertake that physique transformation, 80% of how the body looks and feels has to do with what we're eating. So that could be, it could feel really fabulous because we're eating well. Or it can feel terrible, as with a sugar-heavy diet, and, and your body looks terrible and you feel terrible. Um, and once we begin to grasp how significant this component is, I call it the body beautiful, body healthy formula. And it gives you huge efficiency and focus when you are trying to make these changes. And it goes like this, 80% nutrition, 10% uh, genetics, and 10% training equals 100% beautiful new you. That's it, just 10% exercise? Yeah, now it's a good one. I mean, it's a, <laughs> we, we have to take, uh, you know, according to science now, we have science to prove that 30 minutes of exercise per day performed at a maximum heart rate of 65 to 75% or higher will actually promote and protect brain and blood volume, uh, brain function, and it does you know, a thousand different things to actually enhance physical health, not just your blood chemistry, et cetera, but your muscle shape, your metabolic rate, um, how you feel, how, your flexibility, um, your heart. There's so many aspects of it. So it is really important to understand this focus and keep it in mind. 
No, we don't have to spend hours and hours and hours training. 30 minutes will do, but you got to put it into high gear. Okay, so then let's go to the 80%. The nutrition part. Tell our listeners all about that. So um, I I was a self-confessed, I believe, sugaraholic. I was one of the – there was a great proportion of the North American population walking around undiagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Now, I had the hallmarks of developing that. I would get severe hypoglycemic attacks. I craved sugar all the time. Um, I wasn't well. Um, I was beginning to also experience early signs of heart disease. My father had died of heart disease. Um, So when I learned how to eat clean, which was really, I did it based on a challenge. Um, I needed to lose weight, yes, but the challenge was, could I stick to this way of eating that I had learned to do, which was eating clean? And in it, I discovered that I could actually take my physical well-being, my health, and turn it around through lifestyle change, through positive lifestyle change. And the biggest piece, whenever I start with any clients, when I start to work with them from from Hollywood to, you know, North North America, uh, let's say the northern parts of Canada, we always begin with the following, and that is to strike sugar from the diet. I have a program on my website called Strike Sugar, and thousands and thousands of people have done it because this is the single most important activity you could do to help yourself. If you are standing here looking in the mirror, listening to Dr. Carrie and I today and feeling upset about the way you look and feel, start with sugar. Start by getting rid of that element out of your diet. Now, that said, it's the hardest thing you'll ever do, but it will yield the greatest results. And where you have to begin is to identify where the sugar components live in your life in your office, in your purse, in your kitchen, in your cupboard, in your freezer, in your fridge, in your eating habits, amongst your friends. And then you follow a a program of eating clean. So that means eating properly prepared, well-sourced, whole, nutrient-dense foods that are not packaged and processed and refined and contain the complete package that Mother Nature intended for you to consume to help bring you back to health. Okay, so one of the things that you mentioned was about sugar, that it comes in many different shapes and forms. So can you talk to our listeners about that? Okay. So um, when, I, when I start, again, working with clients, the first thing I will say is, what's the one food you can't live without? Carrie, Dr. Carrie, pardon me, 9 out okay. of 10, it is some sugar-related food, whether it's alcohol, wine, chocolate. I get a lot of um, ice cream cookies, candies, cakes, pasta, pasta, pastries, that sort of thing. Um, any foods that are mm, carbohydrate based and heavily processed and refined will act like sugar in the body. It will translate like sugar. I, I had a client I worked with who told me that she used to go to bed with a tray of brownies underneath her bed every night and in wow. the morning those tray of brownies would be gone. Wow. So that's where the sugar lived in, in her diet. And then when I ask people to identify that that sugary sin that they have, they oh, I can't live without it. That's the very place I get them to begin. And so there's some really obvious things. You know, as I said, the alcohol, the sugar, the pastry, the cakes, the cookies, the candy. But then there's some there's some tricky ones. And there's there's places in the grocery store where I go now that I call a desert for me because there's no food to be had there. But these are engineered by scientists in lab coats who have figured out ways to seduce us through manipulating food and flavors and textures and then we we crave these sugary salty things that will derail us in our health and they'll say oh it's only 100 calories or it's only you know it's fat free or it's uh, sugar free but every step along the way they're trying to trick us into believing this food is good for us to eat in short, you know, if you can't uh, pronounce the ingredients, and there's a, an ingredient list as long as your arm on a packaged food, you likely shouldn't be eating it. And so that's a really good basic place to begin. But this is where the eat clean diet, the revolution, uh, as Dr. Oz liked to call it, um, really fits in. And that is to eat six smaller meals a day based on the consumption of lean protein, complex carbs, and healthy fats all at once. And not, not and, and not um, starving yourself, and not 
counting calories. I, I think counting calories is completely missing the point. I know so many people who try to manage weight by counting calories and they all look frustrated and it doesn't really get them anywhere because I think it misses the exact point about the quality of food. I want to be eating good quality, high quality, if you will, clean foods that are free of preservatives and toxins and refined goods. I want to be eating those foods that will actually contribute to my health. So um, stay away from those kinds of food and eating clean foods as opposed to the diet foods. Diet foods are a big myth. They've made us heavier than ever. <laughs> so, and, Tos- uh, yeah, go ahead. so Tosca, one of the things that you brought up was that you'll, when you work with your clients, you'll ask them what is their uh, most favorite food and what's the food that they can't live without. And so for each and every one of us listening to this podcast right now, we all have one of those foods. But how do you get them to move beyond that fear of not being able to have that food anymore? Because for a lot of people, that they use that food as a source of um, comfort or stress relief or whatnot. So how do you get them to move beyond that initial fear? Dr. Carey, I was one of those people. Uh, I didn't get to be 204 pounds by accident. Um, you know, I, I intentionally self-sabotaged myself because I was in a, a poor marriage, my first marriage, even though I have three beautiful children as a result of that. But the marriage itself was falling apart. And, and I blamed myself. And uh, because my, my first husband treated me badly also, I treated myself badly by not caring for myself with nutritious food. So I was eating peanut butter and ice cream by the gallon and, you know, massive hunks of cheese and and sugar at every turn and not really thinking about what I was putting in my mouth, just putting something in my mouth to fill that empty hole inside of me. But this is where I encourage people to think very hard about your big why. The reason that's big enough that would get you to make change in your diet today now, it doesn't have to be frightening. These can be simple adjustments, simple things that we can do to help get ourselves back on track. But you need to understand why you're doing this. If you're doing this um, just to look like, say, me or, uh, you know, uh, some other sexy model, that's the wrong reason. For me, my big aha moment was um, I we lived in a, a Victorian house that had about 20 steps, very narrow little steps, and I had to go upstairs and say goodnight to my daughters. And this is me at 204 pounds, you know, trying to get up the stairs, and literally that evening, I couldn't make it. I sat down midway and put my head against the wall and cried and realized, I'm in big trouble here. I'm, I'm not going to be around to see my children if this continues. I need to do something, and I need to do it now. So going back to the big why, I always love when when my guests bring that up because whatever part of your health you're working on, you always need to have that big why as your prime motivator because there will be times when you hit bumps in the road, when things get uncomfortable and you don't want to move forward, but you have to go back to your big why to keep pushing you forward. And my why was my girls. I really wanted to be with them and watch them grow into young people, adult women, into mothers, career women. I wanted to be with them, and, and that was that's a big enough reason. Even today, that is my inspiration. Although I have to say that my community is is growing and is so powerful and strong that I do it for them too because I know, like you do very likely, that there are so many tens of thousands of people who are just miserable about their lives. And if they could just latch on and catch one small drop of the conversation you're having or following the Eat Clean Diet, for example, that life could be so much better. And it really is possible. Okay, so let's talk about sugar because a lot of our listeners know that sugar is bad for them. And we've also heard that um, sugar is one of the most powerful um, addictive drugs on the brain. There is. So can you talk a little bit about that? Like how do we get off of sugar when it's such an addiction for us? First we have to realize, uh, I like to always say that sugar isn't a food. We think it's a food because mm, it's in Yeah, you're right. right. It is not a food. It didn't exist uh, four or 500 years ago. We created it by refining the devil out of sugar cane and beet sugar. And when you think about all the tragedy that has been visited upon civilization – 
through the, the manufacturing of sugar and sugar-based products, you know, this is really a negative food. And so first of all, understand sugar isn't a food. It is a flavor. It is a, an ingredient, but it's not a food. It does not nourish. Um, secondly, understand that we have a powerful taste for sweet. That's the way we're programmed as human beings, but that we can change that. It's a changeable, movable, organic thing. Also understand that sugar has the same addictive qualities as heroin and cocaine. It is a white crystalline substance. You take it. I, I can't say that I've done heroin and cocaine, but I have done the sugar. And you get this, this powerful desire, this rush, this amazing feeling. The brain floods with chemicals. It's temporary. You crash, and then you want more. Powerfully addicting. However, I believe that sugar is more dangerous than either heroin and cocaine because we intuitively know that both of those things are bad for us. But we're not that clear on sugar being bad for us. And yet, the American Heart Association just came out and said, whoops, sorry, we were wrong all about that fat. No, it's not the fat that's causing heart disease. It's sugar. And by the way, sugar is to blame for diabetes, type 2, and now diabetes type 3, which is another way to uh, name Alzheimer's and dementia. So, we have to understand that, that many of us are in the grip of sugar, but we're in the grip of a food that is not a food, and that we need to put our glasses on and be enlightened that we can avoid it by understanding how it's disguised, how it appears in our diet, how dangerous it is, and how to move away to eating clean, nutrient-dense whole foods instead. So can you talk about how sugar is disguised in our diet? Uh, if, if you look up the word sugar, uh, just Google it for kicks, um, you'll come up with a list of about 100 different names or disguises for sugar. But, you know, let's go through a daily diet. Let's say breakfast and you had a bowl of Rice Krispies and a glass of orange juice and a piece of white toast with commercial peanut butter. All of that is a massive sugar load. Uh, the Rice Krispies are actually rice grains that have been refined and polished and stripped of any kind of fiber. So you're basically getting just a massive hit of sugar right to the pancreas. Then you follow that up with a glass of orange juice. Well, a glass of orange juice contains, let's say, about eight ounces of juice. And that's about the juice of three oranges. But whenever would you and I sit down and eat three oranges in a row? We wouldn't. But what's in that glass seems like it's good for us, but what's What's missing is the fiber and all the components of the orange that make juice from an orange itself safe to consume when you're eating the whole thing, but not safe when you're eating or drinking, you know, the juice of three oranges in a glass of orange juice. So that's a problem. Um, the toast, refined wheat, massive problem. We have bleached and pulverized and stripped and robbed grain, wheat basically, to turn it into something like uh, white bread, and I won't name brand names, that really are causing massive problems to health. It is, again, another sugar load for the pancreas to mop up. And by the time you've had breakfast, you know, where's your greens? Where's your fiber? Where's your uh, complex carbohydrate? Where's your healthy fat? There isn't anything to be found. Even the milk milk is often skim milk. It's, it's uh, I say, perverted in the sense that Many things have been added to it. So, you know, the very fat we need to help absorb vitamins like A, D, E, and K is missing. And so it's not a balanced meal at all. And this is how we can begin to address every meal we eat. Next time you're driving through a coffee drive through and you say, I want my coffee and my donut, what am I having? Am I having something, something complex? Am I having something uh, that's going to destroy my health? Am I eating something that's going to make me healthier, build me up, or is it going to break me down? And those, that's the way we can begin to address the meals we eat. I don't mean we have to be terrorists. We don't have to make ourselves crazy about it. But if you can begin somewhere by making a change, say that morning breakfast. So my breakfast this morning, I had sautéed spinach greens, which I did in coconut oil with a bit of turmeric. And I did easy over eggs. And that is, that's breakfast, you know, and you can have any number of things that doesn't include those massive hits of sugar. It actually makes me crazy to see it. Fantastic. I'm glad you mentioned your breakfast because I was going to ask you, what did you eat this morning? <laughs> That's good stuff. 
And oh. even things like yogurt. Go to the grocery store and buy the full fat plain yes. yogurt. Yeah. Do not buy the sugary on the bottom stuff. Buy plain. Take a scoop out if you want to take it to work. Put it in a little glass mason jar. Throw some chopped fruit on it and a drizzle of maple syrup and maybe a dusting of cinnamon. And that's all nourishing whole food. It's not been engineered in a lab somewhere to seduce you into eating it. It's surprising when you try plain yogurt that how different the taste is from sweetened yogurt. And I'll have my patients try this. Just try and buy plain yogurt, like you said, full fat. And don't be afraid of the fat. And uh, realize that in the flavored yogurts, how much sugar they actually put in it. And um, just taking the plain yogurt and, like you said, adding some fruit and it's quite shocking for people. They That's when they really see, wow, there really yeah. is a lot of sugar. And, of course, looking at the labels, too, is just shocking. Well, right. And it's it's sad because, because manufacturers believe that or help us to believe that, oh, well, peanut butter is good for us and orange juice is good for us and yogurt is good for us. But then they – and the word is pervert because that goes back to the days when beer was actually a food – and there were severe taxes and laws um, against perverting sugar uh, beer with sugar. Um, so this is what it means: is perversion actually means to pervert with sugar. But nat- natural nut butter has no sugar in it. Commercial peanut butter is pretty much all sugar. So even making that change is a massive vote for your health. Okay, so okay. going back to your rules, we have eighty um, percent is nutrition. of weight loss is genetics and 10% is exercise. A big part of it is managing sugar in your diet. You don't have to, you don't have to go to the extremes. You just start step by step eliminating all of these different forms of sugar. And as you said, instead of eating three meals a day, switch to eating six, six small meals. So you're kind of keeping your blood sugar steady through the day, right? Right. Because as we know, when blood sugar levels vary and fluctuate wildly, there is a greater chance to be overweight. And so we can avoid that. And, you know, most of the time people are actually eating about that often anyway, um, because they're having a snack of some sort in between, but they just don't call it a meal. So six smaller ones make more sense, especially if they're built on that backbone of um, lean protein complex carbs and healthy fats. So listeners, think about how can how you can start eliminating sugar from your diet. And Tosca, can you tell us about your four-week program? Yes. So um, this is a a four-week strike sugar program. You can find it at uh, toscareno.com. And basically, it is a four-week program loaded with menu plans. I tell you what to eat all the way through it, recipes, how to do it. And there is a light emphasis on exercise, but mostly I'm helping you to reset the organs of blood sugar handling by detoxing or clearing them of all processed foods, all sugars, except for a few natural ones. We're, we're very tight even on, on natural sugars because there are certain natural foods that are quite high in sugar. But so, and, and the detox, I'm going to, some, some of the early results have been, we've been doing the program for over a year, but some of the early results have been um, an increase in libido, for example, or um, where a couple was infertile before because their blood sugar levels, they were, you know, bordering on type 2 diabetes. Now they could become pregnant and have had a child. Uh, greater energy, less headache, less back pain. Um, skin is cleared up, less irritability, more energy to get through the day, a robust feeling, a feeling of well-being. So those are the kinds of things you can expect from going on this program. It's not expensive. It's not complicated. You don't have to be a chef. It's it's a very friendly arm around the shoulder. Here's how to get the sugar out of your diet. And remember, I was one of the, one of those people. I was 204 pound sugar addict. I was on my way to becoming diabetic. So I did this on myself, and I this is how I live and eat. 15 years later, your program is such an excellent program. Can you share with us uh, a real case, a real person that you? Um, had go through the program, uh, how what they were struggling with uh, initially, their different symptoms or the different illnesses that they uh, had been yeah. diagnosed with. I'd love to. So yeah. I actually worked with a family, a young couple who um, had two young children, 
um, both mom and dad were overweight. And I mean, not a little bit, but, you know, 150 pounds they had to lose. Um, both wore sleep apnea um, headgear to go to bed because they were having severe problems sleeping. The children were highly disordered, um, you know, very, very um, irritable, moody, couldn't sleep through the night, wild nightmares, etc. Mom and dad were irritable, moody, um, both were on high blood pressure medication, um, heading towards diabetes, uh, type 2 particularly, and really no quality of life. Um, so by putting them on the Eat Clean Strike Sugar program, they lost weight, which is a key piece, but they learned how to eat foods because I taught them how to cook some basic things that didn't come out of a box and regain their health. So the young man, for the first time in his life, his goal was that he wanted to walk into a normal man's clothing shop instead of the heavy man's clothing uh-huh, shop uh-huh. and buy regular sized clothes. And he was able to do that. He wanted to run a 5K. He was able to do that. He wanted to do um, a, a longer cycling event. He was able to do that. So he was now becoming an athlete, a competitive person. He had his health back. He shed his sleep apnea issues, never had to wear headgear again, going to bed, got off all of his medicine, all of it, and dropped 150 pounds. And the same for his wife. And she began, came, went on to become an iron woman to, to compete in one of those, you know, all day training events. So quite a, quite a remarkable transformation. The children, because they began to eat clean and struck sugar from their diet, slept through the night, had no more behavioral issues, no more irritability, were just lovely people. And the quality of life was returned. All of this for no cost. Amazing, amazing results. And it, it, it always shocks me when we just use food. Just use food as medicine, and and you know that saying that food is your best medicine, that it really does make such a huge difference and can truly transform the life of a person and the the entire family. Just amazing. So, Tosca, we're running low on time. Can you again tell our listeners where they can find your four-week program and where they can find your books, and do you have a Facebook page, all of that stuff? Yes, you can find me at toscareno.com, T-O-S-C-A-R-E-N-O.com, or you can find me on eatcleandiet.com. I have a Facebook page, Twitter and Instagram, all at Tosca Reno. Um, pretty much if you just look up Tosca Reno or Eat Clean, you'll get it. Um, I also have a private uh, Strike Sugar page so we can help you through the challenge once you sign up. It's really exciting. People have just literally changed their lives for the better. It's stunning. And I answer every email. So I am here to support my community in every endeavor with regard to transforming your life. Tosca, thank you so much for being my special guest today. This has just been an awesome interview. Thank you so much, Dr. Carey. It's been fabulous. It was a pleasure. All right. That wraps up this very special episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show with Tosca Reno. And I want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in today. And I'd like to invite you back next week for another episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Carey Drizga, the Functional Medicine Doc. Have a great week, everyone. You've been listening to the Functional Medicine Radio Show with your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, known internationally as the Functional Medicine Doc. Dr. Carrie is committed to helping patients find the root cause of their health problems and fixing the cause with natural treatments so they can feel normal again. Dr. Carrie is the founder of Functional Medicine Ontario and is the author of the hit book, Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again. Please tell your friends about the Functional Medicine Radio Show, and we'll see you next week with more from Dr. Carrie.